This is a demonstration on how to properly remove the head and tissues for chronic wasting disease testing. The samples that are used for testing are located at the back of the throat and they are called the retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the tonsils. First, you want to identify the trachea. At the top of the trachea, there is a hard piece of cartilage called the larynx. Cut at the larynx and angle back towards the skull and your tissues will be included. As you see here, you're cutting just below the larynx up towards the back of the ears, being careful not to cut any of the tissues of interest. Now the head has been successfully removed, the front of the neck is still intact, and all of the tissues needed for testing are present. At this point, you can submit the whole head for testing. Simply fill out an ear card with your information. Make sure you record the number on the side, as it is how you look up your results. Poke a hole in the ear, attach the card using a zip tie, place the head in a garbage bag, and drop it off at one of the CWD freezer locations. This section of the video demonstrates how to remove the retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the tonsils for chronic wasting disease testing. There are several different landmarks to help identify where the tissues of interest are located. The first is the trachea. On either side of the trachea are the salivary glands. They are commonly confused for the retropharyngeal lymph nodes, but they are much more lobular, resembling chewed bubblegum whereas the lymph nodes are a single, smooth, often gray-colored node. The lymph nodes will be close to the salivary gland on either side of the head, located here in this fatty area. They are located in front of this muscular tissue, in between the base of the skull and the trachea. Slowly dissect out the tissues, being careful not to cut into the lymph nodes. Both lymph nodes have been successfully removed and are ready to be submitted for testing. The other tissues that need to be removed are called the tonsils. They are located here in this area. The epiglottis, or the firm part of cartilage at the back of the throat, can be used as a landmark. There are two entrances. One is the nasal cavity, or the back of the nose, and the other is the oral cavity, the back of the throat. This is where the tonsils are located. If you think about your own mouth, your tonsils are located at the back of your throat, close to the roof of your mouth. This is the same in deer. Open up the back of the throat and look for two little holes called the tonsillar crypts. The tonsils are located just behind these. Here is a close-up of what each of the tonsillar crypts look like. Using forceps or pliers, grab the tonsillar crypt and cut down to the side, revealing the tonsil just behind. The tissue can be difficult to differentiate. It is often pale in color, shiny, and segmented if examined closely. Make sure to take your time as it is easy to cut into the tonsil and leave parts behind. The tonsils have been successfully removed and are now ready to be submitted for chronic wasting disease testing.
Place the tonsils and lymph nodes in a Ziploc bag. Wrap them up with a completed ear card and put it in a second Ziploc bag. Seal it up and drop it off at one of the freezer locations. The number on your card is what you use to look up results, so remember to take a photo of the card or record the number. This demonstration shows how to remove the lower jaw if the hunter wants to keep the top of the skull for a European mount. All the tissues needed for chronic wasting disease testing are located at the back of the throat. The tonsils are located here, and the retropharyngeal lymph nodes are located back here. Begin by using a knife to cut along the bone of the low jaw. You want to be as close to the bone as possible. Follow the arch of the low jaw bone cutting up towards the skull. Cut along the base of the skull to detach the last vertebrae at the back. Repeat on the other side of the jaw, cutting along the arch. Continue to separate the muscle and fascia slowly until the bones begin to separate. You should be able to pull apart the lower jaw and the skull and start to cut the soft connective tissue in between. Eventually, the arches of the low jaw will pop out. Make sure to keep the soft tissue at the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat connected to the low jaw. You can then remove the first vertebrae with the low jaw. You're left with the top of the head and the low jaw bone with the vertebrae attached and the arches of the low jaw bone intact. The tonsils are intact and protected by tissue located here, and the retropharyngeal lymph nodes are located here, ready for removal and testing. Now all of the tissues are ready to be sent off for CWV testing.